As you've probably already heard, Google's AlphaGo AI has beaten the world's Go champion with a 4-1 to one victory in the series. Elise Hugh from NPR was there to see the win, and she is joining us today to talk about it. Welcome, Elise. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So what was it like in the venue itself? It was like a prize fight. I mean, it was a, it's, it took place in the Four Seasons downtown in Seoul. It was more press than I've seen cover anything in my one year in Seoul so far. Um, there was plenty of uh, Chinese press, uh, and so there were all sorts of languages. And then Japanese press is already Seoul-based, and Korean press is obviously uh, rooting on um, Lee Sedol. And so just huge filing centers. Um, there was a foreign press center and a Korean and press center and both rooms were just standing room only almost every single day but especially on the first and the fifth match days and so just really intense um the google guys so the folks from the deep mind team and then the google guys uh eric schmidt Sergey Brin, when they were in town, they were just surrounded um, in the same way that Lee Sedol was, just unable to move. I mean, it was as if they were Kardashians or something, just a nonstop flash going on, um, unable to sort of take a few steps forward without this mob of press um, surrounding them. So really intense. I hadn't seen anything like this, and especially for Go, which is fairly obscure in the West compared to the East. And I mean, it lasts a long time, right? How long does one match last? Um, about four to five hours, depending. Um, during the fifth match, uh, the players went, were neck and neck throughout. And so they actually uh, had to almost play the entire board because usually when it's clear that one of the uh, players is going to win, the other player, the losing player, will lose by resignation, essentially just throw the game. Um, but during the fifth match, uh, the, the scores, the points tallies were so close that this game lasted from about one o'clock in the afternoon to six o'clock or, or past six o'clock in the afternoon in the evening. And so quite intense. And um, you, I, I was surprised since I've never played Go nor, nor watched it before. Um, there was just so much sort of um, frenzy around this and excitement and interest in Go that uh, you could really sort of um, feel anxious even though it was black and white stones being moved around on a board. So there, there was, what is the... What was actually happening? I know he was playing the computer, but was there a person moving the pieces for him? How did that work? Yes, that's right. So um, Lisa et al. went into a room and actually sat across um, somebody from the DeepMind team who was moving pieces uh, as AlphaGo wanted them placed on the board. So he kind of watched to see where AlphaGo would place his white or uh, black stone, depending on which day he drew, and then place that. But um, a lot of Go uh, is psychological. And Lisa et al. was actually talking in one of the post-game press conferences that he is used to sort of looking across the table at his opponent and sort of trying to read him and in this case his opponent no expression really because even though he was a human being this human was just a vessel for alpha go and so there are a lot of sort of psychological techniques that you use to play go that he couldn't deploy simply because his um opponent was not a man or a woman it was not a mortal at all it was just someone sitting there ta waiting to take an action from a computer and i imagine trying his or her hardest not to influence the game in any way by responding or <laughs> reacting to it. Um, now, from what I read after the first two matches, which Lee, of course, lost, I think it was the first three matches, right? And then he won the fourth one. But after the first couple of matches, it really seemed like a lot of what Lee was saying, you know, like he's he's like the world champion. So he's like one of, if not the best player players of this game. He really seemed to kind of take it personally. I, my, my wonder for a person in his position, because this doesn't really happen very often where you're the world winning champion and then suddenly you're beat pretty resoundingly by, by machine. Like, where does he go from here? What is his next step? And it, what did he seem as kind of devastated in person uh, as, as I kind of interpreted it from what I read? Um, he did seem as devastated in person, I would think, because, or I would say because he was quite gracious in his losses, um, uh, conceding that not only did he not play as well uh, as he would have liked, but also that the pressure really got to him. Yeah. Um, he said that uh, he, that his losses were not a loss for humanity. It was a loss for one man. <laughs> and so he tried to emphasize that. But also um, he sort of figured out that his strategy that he used on the first and second 
in days weren't the best strategies to play a computer. And so um, he figured something out, something unlocked for him um, the, the fourth day, and then he used it again on the fifth day to almost to sort of neck to be neck and neck with AlphaGo. So um, his hope after the final match, according to Lisa et al., was that he would have liked, he now he has a lot more to study, and, and that um, what the machine did for him, um, what this program did for him, was uh, made him question the 2,500 years of knowledge and human sort of heuristics about the game of Go that they thought were correct. And now he's like, wait a second, I'm actually... I'm challenging a little bit what we thought we know, knew about Go based on the way that AlphaGo played. And so uh, it's a learning experience, not only for the programmers who are now going to have to tweak uh, the algorithms based on um, how Lisa it all it and challenged it, but it's also an opportunity for all the humans to pl who play Go to sort of uh, challenge what they know um, about the game itself. Nate, have uh, you been following this? Yeah, you know, I'm curious to know. It was 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 Lee like calling for a rematch, or are there other Go players and other Go stars that are saying, "Hey, you know, I got next. Like, you know, I can I, I can do what Lee couldn't do, or anything like that." Um, you know, what what is yes, what is everybody the kind of wants a crack at it. There like? seems to be a lot of about it. Um, in fact, I interviewed the head of the American Go Association, since that exists. Did not know. <laughs> um, I interviewed the head of the American Go Association uh, following the match yesterday, and he said, you know, there's 50% sort of trepidation about this, but then 50%, I want this software. Like, mm -hmm. How do I get this software? And so, so far, DeepMind says that it's not ready to commercially sell it. However, um, there are a lot of other sort of uh, nine down level Go players who do want to crack. Uh, Lise Dahl said he wished he could have played more. Um, and the Koreans uh, sort of viewing public said that had Lise Dahl on the fifth match and then it was sort of three games to two, they would have wanted to go to best of uh, best of seven to see, see if he could have oh, well. um, <laughs> <I wondered laughs> overtaken the machine in the end. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, there's a lot of interest in more AlphaGo showdowns, but this is probably the moment though that in the way that the deep blue versus casper off game was um for chess this was probably the moment that we saw that uh, ai could could beat um the sort of top level humans at this game so you as google talked at all about where they want to take this sort of technology because you know you mentioned uh, deep blue in the chess win back in like the what 80s i guess and then uh you know we had uh, ibm's watson you know defeating people on jeopardy uh, but it seems like IBM's had a hard time figuring out what to do with Watson next. I mean, there are those great commercials with Bob Dylan and stuff, but, uh, you know, finding like actual applications and making money off of this AI, well, it's still like very impressive that they're, you know, beating humans left and right is, is like, where does it, you know, what's the usefulness of this? Have they talked well, about Google, that at all? Yeah, Google would say that sort of the technology, the learning that's undergirding um, AlphaGo is already put to use in Google Photos and Google Now and um, uh, you know, so, sort of our uh, smart virtual personal assistants um, sort of at a, at a very basic level. But um, the, the deep mind work uh, based on neural networks is actually uh, contracting next with the NIS, so the health service in the UK, to help with diagnosing disease. So healthcare is the next arena that they're uh, moving into. And I, for one, am glad to see it being put to use to something like that to, 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 to help society because uh, you have to admit that even though this Go tournament has been interesting, it's been... F uh, AI very narrowly applied for now. Watson, by the way, uh, is powering a concierge at a Hilton hotel in the form of a robot. <laughs> so it'll tell you, you know, like, you know, answer your questions about destinations and directions. So there's that too, you know, healthcare, concierge, kind of on the same level. <laughs> someone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Elise, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Elise is the international correspondent for NPR in Seoul, South Korea. You can hear this story and many others that she reports on NPR.org. Thanks so much for joining us, Elise. Thank you, guys. See you later. Take Thank care. you.